Hello, everyone. I'm Colin Tessa of Wrestling.com, joined by Caprice Coleman, wrestling veteran, commentator, ordained minister. Uh, the man wears many hats. Caprice, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Good to hear from you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank you very much for taking the time, Dave. I really appreciate it. And, and what a time to be talking to you because this upcoming weekend on Ring of Honor Wrestling, you'll be returning to the ring, uh, at least in, in the Ring of Honor context, uh, to face the Beer City Bruiser, a guy who has been anti- antagonizing you uh, and, uh, and Eddie McBonny for some time now. So uh, heading into that matchup, what are your thoughts on facing Beer City Bruiser uh, specifically and also returning to the ring and Ring of Honor? Uh, I kind of look at it as Beer City Bruiser is facing me. Uh, because when I look at myself at Ring of Honor, uh, everybody sees me as a commentator, and that's fine. But if you look at the indie circuit, I'm very active. And um, he may see me as a commentator, but I see myself as a king sitting on the throne, literally paid to scout my competition. And um, I've been doing it for four years, so I have the up and ups, the ins and outs on every competitor in Ring of Honor, the roster in and out. If I was to face them, I know their strengths and I know their weaknesses. And I think this would be a chance and an opportunity for me to prove that I asked for a bruiser and and uh, his partner to to be what they are, to be more aggressive, to be more fierce, to 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 take the teddy bears aside and, and, and Brian Malone is to to be more fierce, to be the people they can be. And they took that and they ran a whole nother way with it and and forget. The, forgot the person that gave them the advice in the first place to become that and uh, kind of turn their backs on us. And um, so this is my chance to prove that um, I'm no one to turn the back on it. And I've been a friend with them for a long time and um, I'm the wrong person to turn against. You certainly are. And I, I like that, that description of like being the king on the throne, scouting the competition because uh, in the, in uh, the X-Files, Kevin Nack, a Ring of Honor staff member, previewed the match by saying you're a commentator by choice, but he also you know, recognized your uh, you know, accomplishments on the independent circuit. So would you say that you kind of call your shot as needed in terms of stepping back into the ring? Because you were, you were in the Honor Rumble at Duffy Florida's Honor, but this is your first singles match in quite some time. So did it take kind of this you know, animosity on Beer City Brewers' behalf to kind of uh, call you off the throne like that? Or like what, what's kind of the mindset in terms of picking I, your spots here? I feel like I'm in a blessed situation. You know, I, I was given the opportunity to do commentary um, because I was very interested in it at one time and they felt that I was good at it. Uh, people moved around and I was able to land a position there and I accepted a position. I was grateful for the position and and I was happy to be where I was. I, I love wrestling, but I was able to wrestle elsewhere if I wanted to. Um, but I really loved commentary and I, and I still love it now. Um, I look at Ring of Honor and I look at the athletes that are there. And there are a lot of athletes that are there that are young and just looking for that opportunity. And for me to have an opportunity to do something that I can do, it's telling the story of pro wrestling and doing it with passion and doing it with love and doing it from experience. Uh, and letting somebody else be able to feed their family uh, while I'm able to eat as well. I mean, I, I think it's a great handoff. I've been in this sport for over 25 years. Uh, I know logistically I can't do this forever, but I still have a long ways to go. And so I um, I chose to choose this and, and do it well. You know, I, I try to do my best at it and I don't take it for granted. I don't think that, you know, um, I'm the only one that should be doing it and I'm the greatest and I'm this, I'm just blessed to have the opportunity to do so. And I took it. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't get a transition out of pro wrestling. They go from the ring and, and they're done. And so to have this transition in place to where I'm able to tell the story about professional wrestling, I took it, man. And I ran with it. And so when he acts, when, when, when he continued to egg me on and, and ax me and egg me on and, and, and get at me and do this, I, I had to remind him, like, you know, I'm doing this by choice. You know, I'm not sitting here behind the table because I can't move. I'm injured. I'm retired. There's no retiring from pro wrestling, you know. And so uh, I'm showing Bruiser, uh, he picked the wrong one this time. At least in theory, is there anyone else that kind of uh, might, might need a similar lesson that, that you'd want to step in the ring with among the Ring of Honor roster at this point? You know, what kind of looking forward here? Um. Not really. You know, I, I look at Ring of Honor and, and we have a great roster and a lot of these guys, man, they're, they're doing their best at what they do. Um, I'm not one that looks at people. Oh, I could beat that guy. I could beat that guy. I could beat this guy. I look at them like, man, this guy's phenomenal. If I had to wrestle them, I would approach it this way. You know, I don't I don't look at people and, and say I, sh- I should beat this guy and I could beat that guy and I should be here. And I should be there. I think everybody is where they are for a reason. And, and I and I applaud that. 
You know, I've had my opportunity for years and and I've let them have their turn. Uh, but anytime anyone of them want to pull me from behind the desk, I'm more than happy to show them um, what I'm more than capable of still doing. If based on that, if I might rephrase, is there anyone you would want to work with? Maybe not to look at it as if like, oh, I could beat them, but someone would be like, oh, I'd like to be in the ring with them in a more, more maybe of that sense. Oh, well, uh, Flip Gordon, Bandito. I believe I have some, some great matches with them. Uh, I, I would like to tag with uh, Shane Taylor Promotions. Uh, I don't know. I have a lot of respect for the foundation, uh, any foundation member. I would love to do a, a pure rules match. Um, yeah, some, some, some of that stuff, you know, if it happened, it happened. Um, but calling any of that stuff is great as well. PJ Black, I, I would love to do a match with PJ Black. Uh, there's a lot of guys I would love, 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 love to punch uh, Brian Johnson in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, yeah that would I, be something I'd love to do. I hope we had to see at least some, some of those come to light here. But uh, in terms of the commentary, you know, I think that you alongside Ian Riccoboni are really the voice of Ring of Honor. And now especially, um, I would say that's been even more true in the past you know, year plus the pandemic era, as many people call it, you know, without having fans there, the commentary team becomes even more essential. And for me, it's just, it's really changed the whole viewing experience of Ring of Honor. So maybe, maybe just both generally and also again in the, that pandemic era, like how have you really, um, you, you mentioned it before, how have you kind of enjoyed being kind of that, the voice of Ring of Honor, being able to help the, the wrestlers tell these stories and, and that kind of thing? I, I love it, man. I think what you said was totally right. During the pandemic, the crowd left and our voices were the only voices that uh, the fans heard. And the ones that stuck with us during the pandemic, I'm, I'm more than appreciative too. I, I feel that it was not our intention uh, for that to happen as far as for our voices to be that. It's just when you had nothing else, you know, in a way you was forced to listen right. to it. And in, in, in being forced to listen to us, you heard the, the passion and the compassion and, and the heart and the love that we have for this sport. Uh, and we were able to tell that story uh, of professional wrestling and, and make it clear to some people that were just flipping the channels and never seen it before and just saw it, the pure rules and different things that were going on to where they, they tuned into it because they could get it. And if they didn't get it, they could be told how to get it. You know, and you didn't make them feel dumb and you didn't make them feel idiots like idiots. And then even with athletes, being an athlete for so many years, I've had matches and I would go back and watch a match that maybe I got injured on to see how I got injured. And I would see, you know, where I got injured at and the commentary team would be talking about something way off the wall, you know, or the commentator would be putting himself over about how he's so great and how he should be, how he would be doing this and how this would never happen to him and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's really not about you at this time. And, and I've really taken the the heart and the mind uh, that when I'm behind that desk, it's about the people in that ring that are literally putting their lives on the line. People have had life altering experiences between those ropes. And anytime somebody steps in that ring, they're, they're knowing that could happen. And so I feel it's my choice and, and my duty to make sure that everything that happens in that ring is told and brought to the forepoint. Uh, forefront uh, to the best of my ability and again i think you and ian both do a great job in doing that and for the next little over a month we'll get to continue seeing that on big environment television and then the we'll final battle being the, the final event of the year uh obviously we do have to talk about the elephant in the room that uh, late last month ring of honor announced they'd be uh basically reimagining the company in the first quarter of 2022 raising a lot of questions about the company's future the future the future of the roster um kind of maybe in a, just a general sense what are your kind of feelings about that situation in terms of you know all these this uncertainty and and you know not be not no one really being sure what what the future holds for ring of honor at this point i believe um, uncertainty is a season uh that doesn't last long i also feel that you know i have no hard feelings towards ring of honor at all uh during the pandemic a lot of people suffered you know, a lot of people lost jobs, lost homes, lost cars, you know, lost their careers, lost businesses. And Ring of Honor made sure that during the time we weren't working, that we were still taken care of. Nothing changed 
uh, in the Coleman household. And, and I'm uh, grateful for that. And it just, it caught up with them, you know, and, and I'm, I have no hard feelings to that. I know they rode this uh, to the best that they could and to take a season off because it's just a season that they're, they're, they're revamping in April. Um, it's fine with me. And, and I, I look forward to see what the next, uh, version of ring of honor is. And uh, I definitely support it. Uh, if I'm welcome back, I'd definitely be there. Um, Ring of Honor has, has been a place for me for over 11 years, and they've never lied to me. They've never led me on. They've never um, made me feel some kind of way and did me another. And so uh, I'm e eternally grateful for them. They allowed me to learn color commentating on the job. You know, they, they allowed me to learn on the job uh, uh, along with other stuff, you know, with managing, with talent development. Uh, we're producing, we're creative, and, and they let me uh, put my hat in hand in a lot of things that that now, uh, no matter where I go, I feel I'm I'm very versatile, you know, to where uh, I, anywhere I go, I'm 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 very useful. And um, but Ring of Honor is my home. I, I, I love them. I appreciate them. I believe in the sport of professional wrestling, and um, that's that's where my heart is. You mentioned Ring of Honor being your home and having, you know, a lot of time there. And no matter what happens next, I feel like this is a, a good opportunity to look back at that time they've had with the company. So maybe uh, just in, in hindsight, what are some of your favorite um, moments or matches, whether it's on uh, behind the commentary table or in the ring they've had with Ring of Honor at this point? Oh, man. Uh, I guess one of my favorite moments was be G1 Supercard, Madison Square Garden, sold out. I mean, who who wouldn't take that moment to to, to speak about um, tagging with Cedric Alexander for for the years that I tagged with him? We we were a team that that was kind of put together and just just gelled right off the back and became good friends, uh, mentee mentor to brother brother type thing, and um, very happy for him. Um, I really enjoyed um, Coleman's pulpit. Uh, the talk show there that that had its run and it still would be going on today, but they changed a lot of production uh, times uh, and all, which kind of fix that uh, commentary with, with Rick Abani. I think chemistry is a big thing. Like you said, same chemistry that I had with Cedric Alexander's even would be more with Ian Rick Abani because we knew who we were. Uh, Rick Abani is the hands down best play by play announcer in the world period to be as young as he is to to know what he knows to be able to see and verbally duplicate duplicate everything that comes to his mind at the same speed that it comes out of his mouth um and accurately and able to think just like that you know i i applaud him all the time uh on that and, and with wit inside of that having wit having timing being able to to be uh, comical when it's time, be serious when it's when it's time, and being able to feed off of one another—that's uh, something you can't do with everybody. And I believe we have a chemistry that that, that is unmatched. And um, I truly believe that he he's a he's a good friend on air, off air, and um, whatever happens to him, yeah, he kind of feels the same way I do. Man, Ring of Honor has been a place where we just fell in love with, you know, and. Um, it's, it's just one of those places you call home and uh, the relationships that you have there are relationships that that will last forever. No, no matter what happens, you know, a lot of us, you know, we're, we're friends, you know, there and we're friends when we're not there and we hang out. And um, that's just the way family is. And what other place can you go to work and say the same thing, you know, where you look forward to going to work? And, and that's what. Uh, the memories I have uh, with Ring of Honor, my matches with Jay Lethal, my run run-ins with Jay Lethal, uh, whether I was the good guy or the bad guy, <laughs> I think I, I've always had a, a, a good time with him. Um, the Rebellion, when I when I was able to be, you know, a heel Caprice, um, is something that uh, I enjoy because it, through all in all, Ring of Honor, they said that you know 
they would never contaminate me, you know, make me uh, to be something that I'm not. And, and I was able to have, you know, creative control uh, with Hill Caprice uh, and all and, and have fun with it, man, and, and make some meaningful stuff happen. And so I, I have a lot of great memories, man. And I'm sure I'm uh, overlooking some things, but but like I said, the Madison Square Garden, uh, Cedric Alexander, um, Coleman's Pulpit, the Rebellion, uh, all of it, man. I, I love it. I love it all. You mentioned Jay Lethal, you mentioned Shane Taylor, you know, Ring of Honor has such an incredible roster. And for you as someone who's been there for so long now, seeing these guys grow and star in various ways, I feel like I have to ask again, no matter what the future necessarily holds, you know, which ones do you think, you know, or do you kind of have your eye on in terms of like, oh, this guy's going to like really set the world on fire and like really, no matter what happens, he's going to like, you know, have a, like really successful um well, let's say like a year from now, who, who do you think a year from now is really going to be like really a, a breakout star, it, even more so than they have been, maybe uh, with the news of the, the, high, the highest and everything. Uh, most of the roster, really. We I think we we have the best roster that we've had, man. I mean, if you look at the, the past of Ring of Honor and the present, if you look at the past of, of Ring of Honor, they are the stars of today. Like literally the, the past of Ring of Honor are the stars of professional wrestling today. And the current roster of Ring of Honor will be the stars of professional wrestling tomorrow. You know, they're, they're the, the Shane Taylors, the Jay Lethals, the Kenny Kings, the Rhett Titus, the, the Jonathan Greshams. Oh, my God. You know, you, they're, they're all these guys uh, that are there. Josh Goods, um, Josh Goods Woods, it's just so Silas Young, these guys that that chose to be at ring of honor and, and, uh, and, and were faithful there, you know, and, and still are Matt Taven, you know, um, he, he, I'm missing people and I don't want to leave anybody out. And if I didn't say their name and it isn't because I don't believe in them is just the fact that if you are honest, open and honest, and you look at professional wrestling today, what names are out there? What names are hot? They came from ring of honor. And there's a reason why that is. It's not because, oh, it just happens to go that way. It's because there's a formula that Ring of Honor has, which is professional wrestling, that is unmatched, that is unparalleled, um, that, that nobody can come side by side with. And you can take a professional wrestler that is sold out to professional wrestling and you can build anything on top of that. And I believe with the roster that we have now proven – with the rosters of the past, you can take anybody uh, from our current roster now and build on any of that. I certainly agree. It's an, it's an incredible roster. And, and no matter what happens next, like we're very much excited to see what uh, all these talented people, talented people do yourself included, I should say. Uh, and, you know, you know, maybe in the shorter, ter shorter term sense, you know, we'll bring about it going on the hiatus, the first quarter of 2022, you know, what are your kind of thoughts about, what you might do during that time in the, in the wrestling sense, you know, you mentioned uh, you, you, that you're versatile, that you've, they've worn many hats. They've learned about color commentating. You've been doing that very, very well for a while now, but on top of other resp responsibilities as well, you know, what are your thoughts kind of maybe uh, for, for that time, you know, your hopes or your, you know, objectives in the, in the wrestling sense for that time. Uh, just have fun, man. I want to, I want to get my feet wet. Uh, you know, I still have to pay bills and, and through by the grace of God, I'm going to be okay. You know, um, but, you know, just see what else is out there. Just have fun. Do some things that I haven't been able to do before um, and, and, and have fun with it. My goal um, is to be a commodity uh, within Caprice Coleman with or without pro wrestling. You know, I, I feel that um, there's a lot of people that all they have is pro wrestling. And that's OK, because we have sold out for this sport. But this is a sport that, you know, it, it comes and goes with seasons, you know, as far as the crowds and the pandemics and, and nobody is uh, excluded uh, from this. If you look at WWE recent releases and all, nobody's excluded from this stuff. And the heartbreaking stuff that can happen is, you know, you put all your eggs in this basket and you get exactly what you're asking for. Then you get a phone call or, or, or an email or whatever later that, you know, it's all for nothing, you know, so the advice uh, I have and that I would give and that I will hope future tense 
uh, for any athlete is is to have you know find find a way to become a commodity within your own self so if pro wrestling pans off for you phenomenal if not great i was gonna ask for a, for a motivational message at the end, at the end because obviously again of all, all is uncertainty uh you know something like that would have been nice but you just hit the nail right on the head you know it's a nice uh hopeful message for going forward here so with that being said uh, caprice do you have anything that you want to kind of um plug for like on, on the way out here your, your social media or, any, or anything like that that you want to kind of get the word out about uh i'm caprice coleman on anything caprice coleman on uh twitter facebook instagram um trouble at playing high and go seek <laughs> I'm even on TikTok, but I hadn't really figured it out uh, that that well yet. But you know, I'm, I'm on TikTok as well, um, and so uh, just just keep up with me on those things. Um, I'll be around. I'll be around. And I can't I can't wait to see what, what you do next. But in the short term, Caprice, we'll see you this weekend on the Monday Wrestling and Face Beer City Bruiser. Best of luck in that match, and best of luck moving forward uh, on all fronts. I uh, thank you and you as well, man. Thanks for having me on here, Colin. You take care. You too. Thank you so much.